Okay, so we've just had a day out. We've been to our local steam rally. Um, it's at Potton End, which is literally where my workshop is, basically. We took Ralph. It's the first time he's ever been to anything like this, so it was a bit of a trauma for him, but he coped. Um, we were a little bit disappointed. There wasn't anywhere near the amount of um, exhibits the amount of uh, stalls or quite frankly the amount of people there that normally are and I don't quite know why um, I don't know if it's the weather um, it's been so hot over here you know we're not used to 30 odd degrees uh, and it's been like it for weeks now having, having said that the weather broke last night we had a um, bit of a storm last night and it's cooled it down it's gone down to about 23 degrees instead of 33 degrees so it's it's taking 10 degrees off and there's quite a wind today it's really windy um, but anyway it's we've been we've had a, a good day out uh, I took a little bit of video I'll do a little bit of uh, narration through the middle of it just so that it sort of explains a few things but other than that just enjoy and hopefully next week we'll be back on some blacksmithing videos okay so we've had a quick wander around together now I've left uh, Rachel with Ralph sitting somewhere cool and I'm just going to take a quick wander around. This is sort of like the eating area, the bar and the food stalls and as you can see it's pretty deserted. Normally this place is packed this bit, especially around lunchtime which it is now. Um, you know, on the after the burgers and the paellas and etc. The beers. So we'll take a quick wander along the first row. I apologise for the shaky video, but I'm just carrying my GoPro. I didn't bring my uh, gimbal with me. I feel a bit of an idiot walking around with a gimbal on a GoPro, or GoPro on a gimbal. Anyway, this will give you an idea of what's here. As I say, it's nowhere near as much as normal. You can see how parched the ground is. We've had it you know this would normally be on a green field um, and obviously it's not at the moment I'm not going to talk all the way through this so don't doze off because I might startle you when I start talking again so try and pay attention please seeing that dog there's one thing that has absolutely done Ralph's head in there's so many dogs here and he just loves all, them all and just desperate to see every dog on the field not too keen on the noises some of the noises are spooking him a bit some of the hissing and bangings the shires, putting them through their paces. Again you can see there's very few people here. This is normally you know wall to wall, people everywhere packed around these arenas. Now this is uh, something I'm really chuffed to see. This is a Ford Doe or Triple D and they're very rare if this is an original. It says it's a 130 and it's obviously been restored to pristine condition. They were made by Ernest Doe and Son in the 50s and 60s because um, the tractors weren't powerful enough so they took two, in this case Ford 5000s, took the front wheels off, joined them together on a turntable with hydraulic rams for steering. And if this is original, which I think it is the way it's been penned, out, penned in with a little fence, probably 150 200 thousand pounds worth there they are so rare so I'm really chuffed to see that here today cool bits of kit they produce that particular one the 130 which is why they're called a 130 produces about 130 horsepower and they discontinued them when tractors with two wheels could produce that sort of power anyway this is another setup of a old-fashioned this would be in a a workshop somewhere normally everything run by belts from one engine generally 
could be a water mill, could be all sorts running that. You know, bugger health and safety. <laughs> a few bikes. I say there's normally a whole rake of bikes. There's just one row here today, which I'm really disappointed at. I love looking at the bikes. Lots of Triumphs and BSAs, and then we get onto the little Hondas, step throughs. I had one of them when I was a kid to muck about on. And they're now <laughs> classed as vintage. Nice old Ford. I think that's a Model T. Not 100% sure, but I think it is. No idea what that is. I think it might be a Bentley, but again, I'm not sure. There's definitely a Bentley next to it. I don't know why that's there, I suppose because you don't see many of them. And this Austin 7, I love it. Krusty the Desert Rat. Now if you read this sign, you can see it's got bits and pieces all strapped to it, some spares, because it's been to Beijing to Paris. Again, I don't know what this one is. I'm sure there's people out there that will know. If you want to post up what it is, feel free, but you know, I'm not that fussed. Now, this is a lovely old fire engine. There's a whole row of fire engines here, and this is a real old one from the Watford Brewery. It's actually working now. I should have gone around the other side. It's pumping. Right, stoking up the firebox. Wonderful. I wonder how many hours went into restoring that. A few more engines, Land Rovers. Probably find that some of these did service in various local authorities over the years. <laughs> Some of the timber tractors and the breakdown trucks. Nice old Foden there. I'm not sure what that is. I don't know if it's a diamond T. I might no idea really. I think doesn't don't think it's English. I don't know. Again, I suppose I should have looked, but I'm just giving you a quick wander around the showground, so not spending too much time on everything. And a Chevy. That's really nice. Lovely looking tool this is. I'm guessing it's sort of semi advertising for the company. Vehicle restorers. Another row of militaries. Or a row of militaries. There is a sort of a tank here today as well, but it's in the other field, it's like it's giving giving people rides. You can hear it hurting around the field next door. Bit of maintenance on the spot. Again, I'm so surprised that I can just walk along these rows with hardly a person around. You'd normally, on a day like this, you know, be absolutely packed. Really, really surprised. Such a shame for the organisers. They put a lot of work into these events. All right, and this is one for the boys over the pond. It's an American section. Farmers and internationals, I think these are. This is my favourite. I'd love a little tracked vehicle. 
a little cat or something or other. A tiny little one, they do some little dinky ones. I'd love to have a play with one. Now this is my friend Greg. He's here to do the shire shoeing. He doesn't normally do them, he only ever does them at the shows. They turn up to do demonstrations and he shoes them. Now this, I've no idea what that is. Peculiar looking bit of kit. A few more engines. Nicely turned out one there. And these are the, I don't know if these are quarter scale or what they are, but they're dinky. There's a lot of those here, or a few, not as many as normal as I say, but there's quite a few. The cost involved in these machines runs into hundreds of thousands. You look at the guys running them and you think scruffy old bugger, but they've got money coming out their ears to uh, have to look after these machines. They must have. Just to buy them is thousands and thousands and thousands. And the maintenance, the upkeep, the boilers have to be pressure tested every so many years. And we've got the storage, the transport, moving them around the countryside to different shows. And we've got some more. I don't know what you call these? Sort of. Well, the tractors, obviously, but the style of them. All getting ready to go in the arena. This lot, they've all started up ready. And then there's a few stalls around selling all sorts of stuff. There's some peculiar looking implements here. Not quite sure what they're for. Obviously there's forks and spades and a few other bits that I've no idea what they're about. Now again, there'd be stall after stall after stall like this selling all sorts of bits and pieces, new stuff, old stuff. I like the old stuff personally. But this looks like it's the only one here today. It's ridiculous. Or one of the only very few, there's perhaps two, maybe three, but they've got you know, nothing compared with normal. I'd be standing around these going through all the tools for hours, picking out bits and pieces. It's a real shame. It may have been like a knock on from the earlier ones in the year because it's been so hot, there's been a real poor attendance and maybe People have just said, sod it, we're not going because no one's coming. Sort of chicken and egg stuff. Again, there's, there'd normally be rows and rows of these little stationary engines. There's what, about half a dozen here today. That's it, that's the row. More old stuff. This is where Rachel, the sort of stalls Rachel would be clambering through trying to find bits and pieces that she likes. As you can see there's a poor old show. So the steams are coming into the arena now. We'll watch a few of them. Nice old roller. I don't know what's up with my camera. It keeps going very bright and then suddenly dark. I think I may have got the uh, uh, one of the settings wrong on it somewhere. I'm not quite sure which one. These are beautifully turned out. These uh, so a couple of days before the show and a couple of days after, they a lot of them trundle past my workshop. They give the old toot as they go past. It's a lovely sight. The rest of the traffic doesn't think so, but I do feel it's a really nice thing to see still. 
They were slightly worried about getting these out because of the sparks and setting the fields alight because they're so, so dry. So they were asking everyone to be very vigilant if they saw anything. Sort of a light. They put it out quick. All the different makes down through the ages. And virtually overnight, it's gone. Now this one, I guess this is half scale probably, I don't know. I quite know what this one would have been built for, whether this was just a bit of fun or whether they built it for some small application. I don't know. Guessing this is a slightly later model. Foden C type. Estate tractor. They are extremely hot inside because you're virtually sitting on top of the, the boiler. But you've got windows. There's Ralph enjoying the day. He doesn't like the. Oh, the toots. <laughs> Poor little chap. But he's getting used to it. With mummy's help. The air, you can see the air is thick with coal smoke. Beautiful smell. Nothing like it. There's dad letting the kids take the engine in. That's how they all start. And it's passed down through generation. Hopefully the kids will pick up their parents' enthusiasm and keep these things alive. This is a beautiful old Massey Harris, lovely restore, restored condition, uh, combine, really been done nicely, tastefully, not over the top. Look at that, that is something else. Right, now this is my mate Joe with his dad Greg we saw earlier and they're having trouble with this this shire it's one they only ever do it when it's here it comes to do give demonstrations and they demonstrate showing it and it's playing up poor old Joe he's struggling a bit to get some shoes on it his dad Greg I saw the other day he said oh we've got a lovely one coming that you can have a go at I'm wondering if this is the one because it's <laughs> struggling a bit now they've figured out the best way of doing it. Uh, it kept pulling its leg forward all the time and wouldn't let Joe do it. So they've decided, well, pull your leg forward and we'll show it this way. So this is all sorts of tricks and tips that uh, you have to to use with these, some of these big horses. When they had uh, itchy legs, oh, that was a nightmare. You couldn't touch them. You had three men trying to do one foot, two holding it up with various means. Anyway, they got it done. And this is a mule. Something you don't see very often, or we don't. You might see them over the pond, I don't know. But uh, a rather large lady riding this rather large mule. I think this is where all the sir uh, whistles are going off. And it doesn't appear to be affecting any of them in the slightest. Which is quite amazing. The, again, these three mules always come to this show. 
don't know quite where they come from, but they've been around for a few years now, so they obviously know their job, and I think they go all over the country giving demonstrations. Ralph's getting over his fear of all the noises and a little play. I'm going to go and have one last look at the tractors before we head off home. Now this one holds memories for me, a bit nostalgic. I learned to drive on one of these, obviously not in this condition, it was a right knackered old thing. But it ran out of diesel down the bottom of the farm and the farmer took me down in his Land Rover with a bucket of diesel, we filled it up, he drove off in the Land Rover and he leant out the window and said don't ride the clutch and that was my first driving lesson. That was about, I suppose I was about 11. Now this, I don't know what it is, belongs to a guy we know and he's been threatening to restore it for years but <laughs> it's still in this condition, he brings it to all the local shows. Then there's these lovely matadors, old tree wagons, timber wagons, whatever they call them. There's quite a few of those about. So there's a little day out.